Hello and welcome to another Fireside Chat event at Masters Union. I'm Vaibhav Mogra, a student of the cohort of 2021. And today we have with us Mr. Satish Krishnan, former MD of Financial Markets at Standard Chartered Bank. In his 25 years plus experience in Standard Chartered and a large corporate, he's held various roles in the financial markets function, which included risk, treasuries, as well as regulatory aspects. Pleasure to have you, sir. My pleasure. Let's start with uh, asset reconstruction companies or what in the newspapers we call the bad banks. Your views on that? Yeah. I think that's a brilliant step. It's, it's an important step. The market participants and analysts have been calling for it for a long time. What typically it does is to actually take away the uh, chronic bad assets uh, from the bank's balance sheet and take it to someone who can actually do it in a better job, in a better way to recover it. Especially in Indian situation, there are multiple banks dealing with the same defaulting party. And it's, it's very difficult at times to really get all the banks on the same page when it comes to the recovery process and the legal uh, you know, aspects of it. So this, in a way, will be a good solution to do that. There are precedents. In fact, uh, Malaysia had a fantastic experience around it, uh, where they actually had their own bank to create. And the process was very, very unique or different there, where they had to bid for the bad assets. And uh, the reconstruction company will bid and take it. Mm. and they will recover it. Finally, on the recovery, whatever profit they make over than what they had actually paid in the bidding process, that is split between the asset reconstruction company and the bank. Oh. That effectively was a very good model and they were successful. Uh, however, there is an important aspect in this ARC. Typically, you cannot have this as a permanent setup. Mm. It has to actually be a one-off effort, right. especially with the kind of uh, challenge we have in terms of the magnitude of the NPA. Mm. And for such a large, uh, you know, non-performing asset in the banking system today, the NCLT process is not equipped to take that kind right. of a load. You will never be able to create a capacity for such a large setup on a permanent basis. So there has to be a one-time cleanup and one-time effort around it. And uh, this aspect will obviously make a lot of difference to the banks, especially to focus around, uh, you know, putting your growth capital and enabling the, you know, the economic recovery or the growth aspects around it than to be working on these bad assets. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, very much in the news, Bitcoins. Uh, any views on that? I think uh, the, the biggest marketing step for a Bitcoin is the gain by itself. Hmm. Obviously, when, when, we, when you see the rally in any asset price, uh, there's an euphoria which comes in. Uh, undoubtedly, it's not a, you know, uh, uh, not something which is in thin hair. Uh, more and more participants and large companies will jump into it, hmm. and that is what is driving the, you know, the value, which is fine as an asset class. However, the challenge is not uh, about whether it's uh, an asset class to be looked at or not. It is also about generally understanding as a currency alternative. Right. So the the Bitcoin or a cryptocurrency in general, uh, is seen as a, a, an alternate for your fiat currencies, which is where the problem starts. Right. So the investors cannot believe it's a currency and invest in it, and, and later on realize that it is, it is like something which we never understood that. So it is an early stage. It will have its own attention. It will have its own gains. I'm very sure it can play a very meaningful, uh, disruptive role but eventually, how it actually emerges as, uh, is, is a form which we need to wait and see. Uh, I think, I, and I, I really believe that this will do more good than the bad in terms of getting the central banks around the world to think differently right. and reposition their ways of managing money. And that itself will be a big success for uh, the, the innovation that has happened around the Bitcoin. Absolutely. But uh, any, any potential investor, what's the biggest risk that they can look, like they must think of before investing in Bitcoins? I mean, Bitcoin is an asset class. I think, you know, if you do not understand all aspects of an asset, then that's the biggest risk you have. Today, you have a lot of understanding based on what you have seen so far. You know that there's a limited supply. You know that the demand could be un unlimited. And more and more people jump in, jumping into it obviously has its own impact. And uh, you know, people who are probably uh, believers of Bitcoin could be communicating or tweeting more in favor of it. That mm. creates an euphoria. 
all these are in a way uh, a factor which need to be cautiously looked at and, and that is obviously there is no uh, regulatory authority who is going to be guiding it. Uh, I think the commercial world is very very efficient in terms of uh, you know, designing its own factors and create success but we have also seen in every field uh, a bit of regulate, regulatory control is needed and, and, and finally I think it is all boiling down to the common man who is going to be you know, impacted in some way or the other. When we look at the fintech space, it's crowd like there are a lot of companies that, that exist today, but what are the areas which are not yet tapped and that can cause disruption in, in the finance sector today? I think, yeah, there are, there are quite a few areas which are waiting for innovations to come in, partly because they are little protected or partly it's like the, the areas which uh, 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 the fintechs have not successfully tapped it yet. Uh, one important aspect which, which uh, you know, is probably on the card on the table is the foreign exchange side of it. We are talking about you know the the tokenized or you know the cryptocurrency enabling for cross border trade, mm. and uh, you know more the question of the current challenges around cross border dealings, right? And especially the foreign exchange, where the cost of transactions significantly higher. Mm. Not just the banks managing it. There's also a lot of other uh, aspects around it. RBI is in fact uh, created a come out with a sort of a guideline or you know sandbox approach towards innovation around this area. Uh, I think that is definitely a first important step taken by RBI okay. to invite uh, innovations and the fintechs obviously will, will find it attractive. There are a lot of other areas in financial market side which also you know, remain to be fully tapped uh, like uh, you know the retail participation in a lot of asset classes including bonds, mm -hmm. all these areas typically you know could in some way or the other can, can uh, be an opportunity for fintechs right. to work on. So we are still not at in a perfect state, right? Still a lot of space in the fintech markets. Yeah. So sir, as a leader, any key mental models that you have followed or you would like uh, the leaders of tomorrow to learn, you could share some knowledge on that. I think it's about the general personality, remind positive. I think that's very important aspect. I think uh, that probably is my, you know, one of the important uh, uh, commitment to myself. So irrespective of situation, you've got to be positive. The markets, there are, you know, situations which probably can be a little challenging. And that, that to me is the most important aspect. The second thing is about your energy and your fitness. Mm -hmm. I think this is where most of the hardworking people really miss out on. I am little conscious and I think that's very important for people to do it. And third thing is about uh, the knowledge. Right. I think as a leader, you got to be respect people, respect uh, you know, the ones working for you, working with you, and uh, things will obviously be. So thank you very much for taking on the time and talking to us. <laughs>